Hello, welcome to my session on how parents can create an ideal homeschool environment. My name is Dr. Roy Pope. I chose this topic because as children transition from a traditional in-class setting to a homeschool environment, I want to make sure that the transition was as smooth as possible. I also want to make sure that the transition was as smooth as possible for parents as they are taking more responsibilities um, within the homeschool environment. Letting you know a little bit about myself. I served as a teacher, math and science, athletic coach, college professor, and school administrator in the United States and the United Arab Emirates. I have more than 20, I have more than two decades of experience. Uh, I believe exactly it's about 27 years. I've served as a assistant principal and principal on all levels. I'm the author of Nine Ways to Increase Student Achievement. I'm the founder of C and CEO of Edguru, which is a one-stop shop for people of different languages to come to our platform to download the resources they need. They can also go to our blog and download free tools and articles. Lastly, I've been honored as Principal of the Year, the City Council's Outstanding Citizen, Star Principal, and received the MLK Lifetime Achievement Award, along with being a part of a program for Michelle Obama, where she was the guest speaker. You can connect with me in a number of different ways. You can go to our website, or you can go to the blog, and I wanna encourage you to subscribe to that. Feel free to reach out and just send an email. And there are a number of other ways where you can connect with us. So as I start my presentation, I'm gonna stop the camera. Uh, that way I can stay a little bit more focused on the, uh, on the presentation itself. So the topic is things parents can do to create an ideal homeschool environment. Without proper planning, there are a couple of things that will happen within a homeschool environment, just like it would within the school. If the teacher isn't prepared at school, he or she might be pulling their hair out and the student might end up getting frustrated. If the parent is not prepared at home, then he or she will get frustrated and pull their hair out. The student will become frustrated. And ultimately that'll lead to um, somebody being suspended from homeschool, somebody skipping, which might be the teacher, um, along with other disciplinary uh, infractions that might have occurred by the student or that might have been exhibited by the student or the teacher, which is the parent. Now, when you're creating an ideal homeschool environment, what exactly does that look like? If you don't know where to start from, I wanna encourage you to start from around four different areas, creating that ideal space, implementing a schedule, taking breaks, which are very important, especially for younger age children that are in grades three and earlier. And lastly, practicing good communication skills. So let's look at each one of these closely to see what each one looks like. When you're creating an ideal study space, the first thing that you want to look at putting in place is just making sure they have a desk or table, a workstation, where they'll have all the materials they need on the table. You don't want students, or you don't want your children getting up to go get a pencil or a pen or calculator or whatever. Have everything they need already set up there. Secondly, you wanna look at adequate lighting. If adequate lighting isn't uh, present, then what's gonna happen is it's gonna cause the children's eye muscles to strains, and then that's gonna affect their vision. And we don't want that to happen. So make sure they have adequate lighting. We want them to be free from distractions. If, you, if he or she has a younger sibling, um, you don't want to put their workstation in an area where the younger siblings are constantly going by or interrupting them or being curious as children normally are, seeing what they're doing. 
Now, this could be a station or area that's in their own, in that child's room or a separate part of the house where there isn't a lot of traffic. When school, online school starts for that child, then you want to pull or remove all video games and all other distractions like cell phones. Think about it. How many times have you um, been at your computer, your desk, and then you had your phone right there beside you, and then you had to just look over at it, or you had to touch it. You had to just kind of send a quick email. So we want to minimize those distractions from the learning environment. And lastly, again, making sure they have all the needed materials. If you don't know what they need, feel free to send an email to their teacher. Or you can ask the child if they're older, particularly they'll let you know, children do not mind sharing their thoughts and opinions. Uh, lastly, you can easily just Google and say supplies needed, um, and then put in um, the age bracket or the age range for your child, and then you'll get all kinds of suggestions. The next thing that you wanna do is just create a schedule. Schedules are very, very important. Now, what does that entail? It starts with the very first thing that children do every day, waking up. So on the left side, imagine having different time blocks and on the right side, different actions that children would take. So looking at your schedule, let's say if they wake up at 6.30. So on the left side, you'll put 6.30. On the right side, you'll put wake up and they can have the alarm clock set for their time then what's the next thing that will take place of the action? Uh, showering and getting dressed. Then you wanna look at them eating breakfast. So you want a lot of time for that. It's very important that they eat a breakfast in the morning because there's ample research out there that connects um, healthy eating to giving children and even us energy to go about our normal day. So they need that brain food. So make sure that they have an adequate breakfast. And you want to block in lunch, dinner, and including uh, on the end, snack times. Make sure you have in your schedule a section where they are completing their homework. And it might even be broken down by subject areas where they're completing English from this time to this time, math from this time to that time, then they're looking at science, they're looking at social studies, and like that for all of the other subjects. You want to look at the teacher's schedule. When is he or she teaching that class online? So then that's where you're going to block those times in on your schedule for the children saying, okay, this is this class, uh, this is your English class from 8 o'clock to 8.50 because that's, that will be in a correlation with what the teacher is doing from 8 to 850. And again, you can easily contact the teacher or the secretary at the school or the principal to ask about those times. The next thing that you would like to implement or put into your schedule are recess, breaks, naps, and leisure time. You know, this is how I was saying all, um, all work and no play. I mean, sorry, all play and all work and no play. Jack, makes Jack a dull boy. So exactly, that's what this entails. You want to make sure that they have ample time to just relax. Um, not saying it needs to be two or three hours in the, during the day, but just a little time, just to, to have a mental break. It might be something as simple as going out in the backyard and jumping on a trampoline for a few minutes. And it could be structured recess. You can have games um, that they could play. And I want to encourage you to easily Google um, recess ideas for children and just put in that age again to get ample ideas out there online. And the last two things you want to look at is making sure they complete any household chores and they go to bed. Now, when taking a break, there are, the breaks can be built around a number of different criteria. A break could be taking, um, sorry, eating a healthy snack or taking a nap if, again, if they are younger, uh, grades three and above, three and younger. 
exercising and stretching. This could be something as simple as just walking around the neighborhood um, and then um, or riding a bike around the neighborhood and you going with them. And it doesn't have to be long. It could be 15 minutes. It could be um, 20 minutes. Let them spend time outside because as outside, uh, they'll receive sunlight, which produces vitamin D in the body, which is good for them. Let them call a friend. This is a difficult time for children to go through right now. So you wanna make sure that their mental well-being is being taken care of also. That's why it's important to let them have those social connections with friends. You can have them play a game and then you play a game with them and build your schedule around the child's schedule where you can do things like this with them throughout the day. Reading a book is extremely important to building vocabulary. I wanna encourage you to visit a library and check out a number of different books for different age, for different reading levels. Because as the child is reading fluently for a particular level on a book, then you wanna have something readily available that will challenge them and that will help them improve their skills even more. Now, practicing good communication skills. This is extremely important because you want to create an environment that's non-threatening. You want the children to feel comfortable talking to you and expressing how they feel about the learning environment. Be open about it. Um, don't wear your heart on your sleeve. And just know that, again, you're not the parent in this role, you're the teacher. So be willing to just create that pathway for them to come to you freely and just to give you suggestions. You could even have a, make it fun where you can have a suggestion box there and just let them drop the suggestions in the box. And encourage them and let them know that they can talk to you openly and honestly. Now, a number of other different things that you should look at doing as you're molding or creating your online learning environment. Every afternoon, make sure that their computer is charged up for the next day. This could be one of their steps in their calendar, or their schedule daily. We've already talked about the importance of eating breakfast. When they start their classes, make sure that, they, um, that the sound is on, that they can hear it, it's not turned down. And then in some, some cases, uh, the teachers already gives children instructions to go ahead and mute their microphones. So the children should know how, to, how that function works. And if they don't, I wanna encourage you to uh, just set that with them the first couple of days, especially for older children, uh, middle school and higher. Um, just set that with them the first couple of days, then you can pull away. Now, the younger the child, the more active you should be with them in their learning process. Stick to the schedule. Don't vary, don't go uh, from a very structured schedule on Monday to having blocks and gaps of time just open on Tuesday. Children need to see some consistency. They need to see some consistency. And just work together to make the best of the learning environment. Make sure the children go to bed at an adequate, decent time, and that they're consistently going to bed at that time every night. Now, again, there are a number of different ways that you can connect with me um, through the website. I wanna encourage you to, to uh, subscribe to our blog. We're always offering free tools and assistance to parents and just uh, send an email along with those other additional ways. Thank you so much and that concludes my presentation.